Hey guys, how's it going? This is the Bald Metal Nerd coming at you with uh, another wonderful uh, screen capture video where I'm going to be comparing uh, several different media jukebox player or just, you know, what's it called? Desktop music player style applications. Now, to make it onto this list, an application had to meet um, a few different requirements. One, it had to be free. Uh, two, it had to, um, you know, basically, obviously, play music in some sort of like a uh, music library slash organizer uh, fashion. Okay, that's basically it. I mean, those those were pretty much uh, the main requirements. Um, you know, because I'm not going to buy software just for uh, demonstration purposes, obviously. So. Um, now I am. There is one notable uh, exception to this. Um, I'm sorry. One notable omission from this list, and that is uh, Fubar uh, 2000. That is a very popular uh, desktop music player, but I find its interface out of the box for managing music, listening to it, all that, to be rather lacking. And honestly, there's, in my opinion, it just takes too much time to set it up to work the way that you want it to. Of course, there's going to be somebody who's going to leave a comment and say, well, I can do it in two minutes. It did be beep. If you can, good for you. Uh, I think FUBAR is a very good player for a number of reasons. I like to use it uh, for like ABX testing. It's, it's the best thing that I've found in Windows to do ABX testing of audio, so it's wonderful for that. Um, I also... Uh, you know, use it to measure dynamic range, obviously, in recording. So it's definitely has its uses as basically kind of like an audio tool, for lack of a better term, but I don't use it much as a player. So uh, what we're going to do is we are going to basically talk about the software I liked the least to the software that I liked the most. So we're going to kind of go in reverse order, okay? We're going to go from worst to best, okay? So, start off with the worst. Our, uh, we're going to start off with um, this program here. Uh, this is called Amarok. Uh, it's much more widely used in uh, Linux than in Windows. I think this was just recently, um, you know, ported to Windows. I don't know how long it's been on Windows 4, but it has some issues. I'm going to show you what my main issue is with this uh, program here. Let's get to, let's try to get to the preferences tools. Uh, it's settings perhaps? Ah, configure Amarok. Okay, so that's kind of like the, um, you know, the preferences. It can't even, it doesn't see my network drive. Uh, it doesn't even see all the drives on my machine. I have a map network drive is Z, which is where all my media is. And it doesn't even see that drive. Pathetic. Uh, it, you know, um, let's see if I can at least see um, subfolders. Uh, I'm not sure that I can. Whatever. Anyway, this is a total fail because it can't even see my network drive where my files are located. And I'm going to show you also another failure of this program. Uh, it's a basic, extremely basic UI uh, failure. I'm going to go ahead and close it. And now I'm going to click the taskbar and it doesn't reopen. To actually reopen it, I have to go to the uh, notification area and uh, choose it that way just to get it to reopen. So yeah, this on Windows, I have used it in Linux. It does tend to work better in Linux, uh, but in Windows, it is absolutely a complete failure. So, yeah. 100% fail there. So, uh, yeah. Next program is uh, called Banshee. This also is a very common um, program uh, that is used in Linux for this purpose. And uh, it doesn't work so good either. <laughs> For uh, for my purposes here, we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go into preferences, and I think kind of have the same uh, 
Now it does see, let's see, it does at least see the drive, but it doesn't let me specify subfolders, right? This, if I were to do this and apply the, uh, you know, apply it, it would scan all of the music on that hard drive. It won't, you know, it would scan all of the music on that drive, not let me just specify specific folders. And to me, I have, a, I mean, there's a fair amount of music of my wife's on that uh, drive that personally I'm not a fan of. So to me, the um, ability to sub s s scan subfolders is absolutely critical. And that is just a basic failure of this program in Windows. Again, I'm not criticizing these in Linux. I'm just criticizing these in Windows. So Banshee Music Player, I'm sorry, Banshee Media Player in Windows is a failure, at least in my opinion. So we'll go ahead and just close out of that. And uh, the next program that is a big failure is this is a J River Media Jukebox. Yeah, J River Media Jukebox. Okay. Um, apparently it's still scanning files into the library, whatever. Um, its UI is a bit of a mess. Uh, let me go ahead and show you. Uh, by default, apparently it opens to Amazon's web page, whatever. We're going to go ahead and uh, let's get into its preferences here. And I didn't ask it to, I sure as hell didn't add all of these, um, folders, right, to be scanned for media. It decided to do this all on its own. So if I actually wanted this to work correctly, yeah, that's that's great. Okay. I would have to um, more or less remove every single one of these folders I didn't want. Right? And now, let's say... Um, take a look here let's see if it will at least add like a subfolder okay that one you can't add subfolder so it's not a complete failure I mean you could probably get this to work the way you want it to uh, but the fact that it kind of aggressively scanned uh, all of your computer without you telling it to uh, to me, that's just kind of a pain in the ass. You know, I don't like that. I would prefer for it to just, you know, ask you, <laughs> at least ask where the hell you want to scan instead of it just going nuts. Um, supposedly this has some higher end audio file features with better sound playback or whatever. I personally think that's BS, but... I just don't really like the UI of this player very much, and that was a huge portion of the reason why. The fact that it just aggressively did it. That would take me a lot of time removing all the shit, you know, just to get it working the way I want it to. I'm not a big fan of that. Plus, I don't think um, it does everything that I want it to do since it's a free, uh, or I'm sorry, a free version of a paid application. Usually that means there is some sort of um, limitation. For example, I don't see any last FM scrobbling, 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 however you say it. I like to use that. Um, plus, I don't see like transcoding to portable devices or anything. And in this day and age, I kind of expect that sort of thing in a desktop music player. So, again, um, I'm not a fan of this uh, software, so let's go ahead and uh, close that one down. Not loving it. Okay, moving on. This is actually probably the best um, open source uh, one that I've looked at so far. It's, it's Clementine. It has actually all of the features that I want. It has the last FM uh, scrobling, scrobling, however the hell you pronounce it. You can do that in it. Um, it scans your folders just fine. Obviously, we've got tons and tons of music here. Uh, 
it'll play it all no problem but there is one little issue uh, portable devices don't work in Windows on this they may fix this in the future uh, but it currently does not work so uh, even though I basically like the user interface of this and I think it's a fairly solid program that to me is a fatal flaw obviously so Clementine unfortunately can't be a winner either so we'll get we'll go ahead and we'll shut that one down All right okay so now we're gonna be down to our final three um, you know uh, contestants and these are three of the best known uh, programs in the style for Windows yes I know there are some others iTunes obviously is a huge one but that program is a total piece of fucking shit iTunes is an abomination uh, unto itself it installs 50 million extra Apple services and other shit you don't need it iTunes would not touch with a 20-foot pole uh, and Windows Media Player, it's okay, but it creates a whole lot of extra files in your folders, and it's a little bit of a mess, too. It's not as bad as iTunes, but it's no great shakes. Um, and VLC is not a jukebox-style program. Now, I love VLC for playing individual files. If I'm just wanting to listen to one song, I'll double-click it in Windows Explorer, and, and play it in VLC all day long. It's also, of course, great for video files or DVDs or blue, you know, whatever. But as far as like an actual media jukebox, it really doesn't function as one of those. Now, um, the next program that we're going to be looking at is uh, this is Media Monkey, okay? And this is the free version, all right? Now, um, it actually has all basically all of the features that I'm looking for. Okay, and uh, it works pretty well, but a lot of the features uh, in this program are, since this is, you know, quote, the free version of the paid program, a lot of the features are locked behind the paid version. Um, let's just, for example, see what is kind of locked behind the... Um, the free, or I'm sorry, the paid version here. We're going to go into options here. And uh, let's see. I think one of the one things that I want to do, let's, uh, yeah, we'll look at the portable device here. Okay, whatever. So, okay. Let's see what this does. Yeah. I'll just bear with me, guys. I'm just kind of. Yeah, see, um, Transcoding. Uh, when basically, when you're transcoding files when you're loading onto a portable player, basically that the reason that's quote a, quote unquote a big deal is because you can down convert your files to a smaller size to fit more songs onto your portable device. Um, you know, and in my personal experience. Um, with my, um, phone, the way I listen to my phone, fidelity is not incredibly important. Capacity is my big thing. And the reason I say that on my phone is the way I listen to it, I'm either listening, uh, you know, through Bluetooth, uh, you know, to some Bluetooth speaker and or, um, you know, in my car stereo over Bluetooth. So... Or I'm listening over Bluetooth headphones while I'm doing some some sort of outdoor activity like walking, biking, or cutting the grass or something. So in those cases, fidelity is not incredibly important to me. So for me, transcoding is kind of a big deal. So and a lot of other things are stuck behind the paywall, as it was for Media Monkey. Now, if all you want to do is listen to music and you don't care about some of those other features, this is a very fine player. I mean, it works. Works great. I mean, obviously... Oh, crud. We don't want to get any copyright there. <laughs> you know, I forgot my volume was turned up. Um, you know, basically, it's... Uh, it, it works just fine, right? 
you know, it, it yeah. No complaints about the UI. It's pretty good. I think it does scrubble to uh, last FM. Maybe I don't know. Anyway, it's a fairly nice program. It has a fairly big community around it. But again, the free uh, version limitations are pretty irritating. So let's get that one out of here. Uh, next up, we're going to talk about uh, what I call a very, uh, this is their classic device here. I'm not device. Um, man, my brain doesn't work. Classic program. Uh, this is obviously uh, Winamp. And it's something that's been around, oh, hell, since the 90s. This is definitely the oldest program we're looking at in our roundup. Um this is the most current version of Winamp. Winamp is currently, quote-unquote, dead for lack of a better term. Uh, but even in its, even in this form, it's still pretty damn usable. Um, you can uh, scrabble Last.fm with it if you download the Last.fm app, so that is possible. Um, but as you can see, it's pretty speedy switching. It'll start playing a song. There we go. It's playing the song. No problem there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the options and see just exactly what we got here as far as um, syncing goes here. Transcoding. See, you can transcode everything, right? And it works fine. Um, yeah, it's a real nice... Uh, I, I can't complain about this... Uh, Program. Let's see. Let's see if there's a send to. Yep. Let's see. Devices. There you go. I can. I could use either the internal storage on my uh, phone or the SD card. And as good as Winamp is, it's not my. Um, it's not my absolute favorite. It is probably out of all these applications. This is definitely my number two choice. And I can see why some people would want to stick with this, you know, the classic look and feel, the whole nine yards. It's real nice, but it is a little bit dated in the way it looks. Um, I know you can customize it, yada, yada, yada more. And there's still a fairly good community, and I still think this is a pretty damn solid choice. I would not tell somebody not to use Winamp. Any of the other programs thus far, they're all shit, basically. Uh, Winamp, I'd say Winamp is really good. Uh, you know, it's definitely, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say Winamp is, is definitely worth, uh, taking a look at, uh, trying it out, seeing what you like. And then, of course, my favorite application is Music B. Um, this is really just a wonderful uh, free application to use uh, for this purpose. Obviously, the last FM scrolling's right there. Um, you can. It's got an EQ with different presets. Obviously, you can do manual. Tons and tons and tons of, you know, if you want to screw with that, a lot of options there. Now, this is going to look a little um, deceptive here on the device man devices here. It has uh, my iPod. Now, this program does not properly work with iPods. I actually tested it with my iPod, and it uh, was was pretty much a big fail. Okay, I actually had to, unfortunately, reinitialize my iPod and everything, kind of rebuild it. Not that I care, though. It's only a 16 gig nano, so it wasn't a big deal. But... Um, yeah, this doesn't really work properly with iPods. Whatever. But it works great with Android devices. Let me uh, let me go ahead and actually demonstrate that for you right now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy some fi or I'm going to copy some uh, stuff to my um, to my um, phone. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I just, I'm just like, I can't talk, guys. <laughs> it happens. You just get hung up. You don't know what the hell you're saying. It's good stuff. Anyway, I'll go ahead and copy, uh, yeah, I'll copy this album here, right? And, uh, we'll send this, you know, right, 
highlight what you want, right click, send to, device, and then I'll send it to my phone, which is the LG G Stylo, right? And there we go. And as you can see, it's transcoding. This These are 320 kilobit MP3s. And what this is doing is this is copying uh, all these files to my uh, smartphone. And this is a hell of a lot easier than the process that I did before. I'll actually link the video in the description of the way I used to do this. It was way fucking harder than what this is. This is this is nothing compared to what I used to do. And it's just going to copy them over. And uh, right here, this is my phone in Windows Explorer, obviously. And uh, there's my SD card in my music folder, right? And it automatically creates folder and a subfolder with the damn songs on it. That's wonderful, right? Great for an anal retentive dork like me. <laughs> I love it. I, I didn't have to manually do that. This is this is great. Uh, I love it. You know, um, it doesn't get any better than that. I, I Now, to be fair, I did have to do a little bit of configuration to get this program working this way, but it was incredibly easy. Um, all I've really done to this program is I, uh, let's see, where is the, uh, I'll, sh I'll show you the only changes I made to this thing out of the box. I did view, uh, oh yeah, I like to see the sidebar, so view, I know this is so tough, boom, right? And the other thing I did with the uh, transcoding is I uh, I had to download basically uh, since I have it go to AAC um, you know I uh, shit I had to download the encoder that was nothing it was nothing to get that to work um, you know and basically the way I have it the quote priority that I, or I'm sorry, the profile I have it do is just small, uh, small file size. Because again, fidelity on my phone is not important. Um, you know, I did a whole bunch of uh, ABX testing, uh, you know, to kind of test to see if I could hear a difference or not. And I'm actually going to insert that uh, the results of that into the video. Well, I guess now's as good a time as any to put that part in the video. So uh, I'm going to stop recording for a second, uh, put that part in, and then we'll get back and we'll talk a little bit more. Okay, guys, here is uh, the results from the uh, ABX test that I just ran uh, in between the 128 kilobit uh, M4A and uh, the low setting, which is what I try to use for, you know, the portable player in Music B. Uh, now, I did use my, uh, quote, killer sample uh, that I used to test uh, 320 kilobit MP3. So even apparently on a uh, somewhat lower setting, I can still tell the difference uh, between 128 and uh, what I call, you know, the slightly lower size, I can st I get, I got eight out of eight right. That's not random chance. So, okay, guys. Um, now that you saw me talk about basically 128k AAC versus the setting that I have set up here in Music B, what's ironic is I actually had a harder time uh, telling the difference between 320k mp3 and 128k AAC than I did between just 128k AAC versus like I don't know 110 AAC I think the reason for that is once you get beneath 128k you do start to lose some audio information it's not horrible to listen to or anything but I think it's just more noticeable um, you know I think after that I mean they just it just can't keep some of the information. Now obviously as you can see in my uh, music library I mostly have 320 kilobit uh, mp3 
And the reason for that is I discovered a long, long time ago that is really the sweet spot in between fidelity and uh, storage space. In fact, with my uh, iPod, you know, I used to use 128K AAC, but I still can tell the difference. So I figured with my iPod, I and I still use, I got to use Copy Trans Manager to copy music to my iPod. It's really the only thing that works. Um, I can at least browse my iPod in this uh, program. As you can see, on my iPod, everything is 320K MP3. And the reason I'm using my iPod this way is uh, basically I'm using my iPod as, quote, my audio file player. For, I mean, I, I don't like to use that term, but whatever. I usually listen over high-quality headphones to that, and the DAC in it's really good. Uh, really, my iPod sounds... The sound quality on it is is great. It has a really good DAC in it, headphone amp, all that fun shit. You know, it's a pretty nice device, except for the fact that it's an iPod, right? Uh, if it ever dies, who knows what will happen. Um, you know, I certainly won't buy another one. Uh, I got this one for free, so can't complain. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much a very quick overview of uh, all of these different programs, which ones I liked, which ones I didn't like. Um, if you use something that I haven't mentioned in this roundup, please let me know. Uh, if you think I, if you agree with me, let me know. If you don't agree with me, let me know. Uh, if you're running something other than Windows, let me know what you use. I'd really be curious to hear whether you use um, a Mac or Linux, you know, let me know what you use. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching this whole thing. Uh, if you did like what you see, as always, please thumbs up, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.